is the August installment of Holy Kowal. Good evening, congregation. Good evening, Court Street Church Goers. First of all, we want to apologize for being a week late. But if any of you were around last week, we had a storm on Monday. I didn't realize how bad of a storm because I was downstairs in the basement. But the major part of our storm was right very close to Westview Elementary School, which is just four blocks from us. So I'm very, very, very grateful that I'm here today. And I apologize because our studio is in Krista Tildred's living room. And we did not have electricity to do the recording. And when you did not have the electricity, you all of a sudden start appreciating electricity. We were without electricity uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. We got it on Thursday night, which was indeed a miracle because we were told we weren't going to have it till Saturday. So when the Thursday night at 9.15 came on, we were very excited. We had lights and we didn't have the sound of the generators running. So I think, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad and lucky and fortunate that we weren't in Cedar Rapids, but it does make us all be aware of that there is something that has control over us and that we sometimes are in the hands of other things. And I like to think that we're sometimes in the hands of someone who comforts us and I call that person God, and I really am grateful that my house wasn't too damaged. My yard only had a few sticks, and that uh, we're here and alive, and that we can share our our stories about comfort and things like that. Well, it's August and it's the dog days of August. You know, it's the days are a little get a little bit shorter, and it's a little bit more humid, and it's tired you've done all the summer activities and you're just waiting for the fall but waiting for the fall this year is a little bit more interesting or unique going back to school is certainly has a new dimension to it as a teacher i always looked forward to getting my classroom ready and starting a new theme and putting up bulletin boards and really appreciating those new freshmen that were coming in and um, meeting them and talking to them on a one-to-one -one basis. Well, that's going to take on a different look this year, this summer, this year, fall. And it's also going to take on another look uh, for the students of how they are approaching. So what we thought we'd start to do is talk to one of our congregation uh, members who has not one child, but four children in four different buildings and the decision process that they had in deciding if they'd send them back to school and uh, we're going to find out that it was it's daily wavin wang will be here with wisdom we have a red carpet uh special event about mask wearing uh we're going to go on location today or in this segment we're going to go all the way to Winnebago, Illinois, to meet a member of our congregation who is starting a new business venture. It's just now really, it's holy cow, wow, wow. That's church on Wednesday on the web on wheels. So that's fantastic. We've got misses, um, messages from our nurse. A great big thank you to all the people who helped Methodist Monday and uh, very great special appearance by a, well, she's nationally known now, a singer, entertainer, who has performed at Court Street uh, for us as part of the concert series. We've got a lot of things planned. We hope you enjoy it. Um, and we hope that we get, stay connected as a congregation. Hello, this is Dick Wang. 
uh, here again with Wang's Wisdom on Kao Wow. And uh, I've been thinking that since we're in our own homes quite a bit more these days, since we're kind of sheltering at home, uh, I thought I would talk about homes and houses and I'm asking you the question, what do you think? Is there a difference between what we mean when we say a house and a home? And if so, what do you think is the difference between uh, a house and a home? And then thirdly, do you think Jesus had a house or a home of his own? And where do you think that would have been? So that's some things to think about. And after you have a chance to think about it, I'm going to come back and share some of my perspective about what that means for our lives and what it meant for Jesus. I'll see you then. Thank you. And now it's time for Jabbing with Jim. Well, as you can tell, it's the last month of uh, August and uh, we're all trying to get in some pool time and um, our next guests are at the pool and we're going to talk to them about being schooled at the pool I guess. So hello Sarah and Hi. how are you? Hi. Hi. Sarah I want to talk yes. to you first. Um, when I got the uh, message that Thomas uh, daycare was not going to be in session for a while I went, well, that, this could be fun. I could be a teacher. And then after a week, I went, this isn't as much fun. And I'm wondering what other people are doing. And I thought of you, especially, and your family, because you would have five, four people at home being schooled. So how did you handle this uh, situation, the first part, like from February to... Uh, this summer how did you do the schooling um it was kind of different because they're all in different ages uh hannah is able to do a lot of it herself in high school and morgan even in middle school is able to do a lot herself that i didn't have to do a whole lot with them uh rachel we kind of had to keep on schedule and kind of remind her that we couldn't just watch videos that we needed to do some schoolwork too and Wyatt tried to run and hide from his teacher whenever there was a Zoom call. Um, but we kind of would talk him into doing an assignment on Seesaw and then maybe watching a video or doing an activity together. I remember uh, a couple, well I, well, I guess it was maybe a couple months ago or September, you said, oh, all of the kids are in school and that <laughs> that time for yourself. Well, that changed, didn't it? Yes, it did. Uh, what was your house dynamics like during the day when you had all the kids at home? Uh, I think tensions got a little higher because just because we were all together all the time, there wasn't as much time to escape from each other or have our own alone time or time with friends. Um, the older two have started doing Zoom calls with their friends occasionally for birthdays or just to talk to someone else. Um, Rachel and Wyatt will both have times that they go into their room and they're in their room and they don't want anyone to come near them. They need their time away. Um, luckily, we had got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas. Uh -huh. And so they've bought some new games along the way. So they that keeps them busy. Um, for my birthday and Mother's Day, I asked for a TV for my room so I could go to my room and escape them. For a little while um but now they've discovered how nice it is to lay in my bed and watch tv so they fight me for it sometimes do you think that this hurt them anyway educationally um i they were behind i feel like they're not where they would have been had they been in school especially the elementary ages more um Middle school, I think the teachers did, at Marshall did an excellent job with keeping their assignments coming and keeping them kind of where they would have been. Uh, high school, definitely in math, they, Hannah still had her assignments. She had her list for the semester and her teacher 
recorded a mess a video every day and taught their lesson and was available for questions and answers, um, which was very helpful to keep her motivated in math at least. Well, I keep, I keep on thinking, you know, education was going on and I didn't have any doubt until they, when they opened school this year or tried to open school, they kept on saying, we will be tougher and attendance will be taken and grading will be there. So I didn't know if they were apologizing for a semester or, or for a situation where they may not have learned as much. You know what I'm saying? They're, yes, their grades could not go down okay. during the, the emergency remote time that they had in the spring. That sounds great to me. Uh, yes, I think that may have left some high schoolers maybe a little unmotivated because they knew they had an A and they didn't really have to try hard because they couldn't go lower. Um, well, granted, but, did they take finals? They uh, did there not, were no finals for they, second semester. There were finals for first semester. Yeah. Hannah, did you, how did you feel about missing out the second semester? Um, I, I kind of took it as a point of, as time to, uh, focus on the classes that I wanted to focus on more than uh, some of my other classes. So like I was focusing more on my math class and my AP classes because I knew I had AP tests for those classes and math is going to continue to be impactful. So I was able to focus more on those classes without having to worry about the others as much. But still. Congratulations are in order. I hear you got a five on one of the government tests, AP tests. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe you can be president. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I, maybe that should be a criteria. Enough said. So, <laughs> uh, so it seems like you adjusted really well. Was there one thing in this situation, Sarah, that was hard or it was difficult to maneuver or that I think it's just been hard because we're a family that is very close to family and we spend a lot of time with our with our not it's just family. our immediate family but outside of our house as well and we haven't been able to do that that um this is really the last couple of days was the first time we've really been around family other than who lives in our house I know there was a grandpa who missed some uh, grandchildren, he told me. Yes, he did. So he was happy to finally spend a little time with us yesterday and today. Um, then they're going to be kind of getting ready back for back to school again. So it, it might be a little bit again. Well, let's talk about back to school. You've got some decisions to make. In fact, you've got four decisions to make. And yes. the sophomore, help me now. Hannah's a sophomore at Auburn. Yep. Uh, Morgan is a sixth grader? Seventh grade. Seventh grader at Marshall. Rachel yes. is third? Fourth grade. Third Fourth grade. grade. Fourth grade. You can tell I've missed a year. Fourth <laughs> grade at Marshall. And Wyatt is in uh, kindergarten? Kinder yes. At Montessori. So you've got Correct. four different levels and three different schools four different schools four di oh, right four different schools what decisions have you made about going back to school i know i'm sitting here saying do i substitute do i not substitute does thomas go three days does he go five days we struggled with it a lot because the district wouldn't didn't promise that te that students in special programs would be guaranteed a teacher from their program, but would rather be taught district curriculum. Uh, with four children in special programs, that wasn't something we were willing to give up. Uh, Hannah, we had originally decided that all of the kids would go back in person so that they could have their teachers. We now know that at least at middle and high school level, they will for sure have their teachers. Uh, Hannah has chosen to go back remotely now instead of in person. Uh, Morgan, we're still on the fence about, but she may be going back remotely as well. Uh, 
Rachel is really, really wants to go back to school. So she is going in person for now at least. And Wyatt is going back in person just because at a kindergarten level it's, and for Montessori, it's very hard. I don't have Montessori materials at home to be able to help him. Right. And I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. <laughs> It, Montessori would be very hard uh, without the manipulatives. Yes. You know, you're going to be remote, as I understand, next year. Yes. At least to start. Um, are you pleased with the decision? Are you? Yeah. Um, I was very anxious about going back in person. So going back remotely, I feel very relieved. Good, good. And with the district's decision to not guarantee teachers, we found out that many of the special programs had much higher in-person attendance than what the district has been saying. Um, they've said that across the district they're at 50%, but in fact many of the special programs are at 75% or higher mm. um, in-person attendance, which is putting classes at the maximum level or higher right now that they're still trying to get numbers down. So Hannah's decision to go remote not only helped her, but it also probably helped the district's numbers because many of her classes were over the 20 person limit. Oh, um, Sarah, I know yeah. I always got the two of you mixed up anyway. Hannah, how do you do it? How do you get motivated to do school at home? I mean, I, stay in my pajamas and I'd be playing Nintendo games, I think. <laughs> um, a lot of what motivated me in the spring and probably will and come this fall is um, a lot of my classes being in the special program are AP. So in the spring in like May, I have to take a test that could count for college credit and that presses me to actually participate and make sure I'm doing everything for the class. Okay. Um, what classes will you be taking this year remotely? Um, AP World AP History. AP World History, Chemistry, um, Tri Trigonometry for Math, uh, AP Lit. AP literature and composition for English, which is part of the capstone program. And then we're not real sure yet how they're going to do media production and beginning dance remotely for, yeah. for Kappa. Um, well, you know, media production, you could produce a segment for Holy Cow. <laughs> you could, we could, have, we'd love to have a youth segment for Holy Cow. So, <laughs> I like the chemistry now. Don't you need a lab for that? Will you be blowing up your house? Uh, let's <laughs> hope not. <laughs> um, we're, they're not real sure yet how everything is going to work, which I think left a lot of people with questions. Mm -hmm. um, because even with a lab, they aren't going to really be able to do anything with partners a whole lot just because of the distance and space they need. Um, but I, I'm sure they'll figure out something hopefully safe that we can do at home. What do you think will be the thing you'll miss the most, Hannah? Um, being able to see friends, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll say friends. Last year we tried really hard, especially in the fall, going to all the football games and being part of the school. Um, I think that moving to spring might make games a little bit colder, but maybe we can still try to go if they can have attendance of fans. Sure, sure. Well, um, I can tell you that we miss you guys at church. Uh, tell that Rachel, I'm really uh, missing her and her wisdom and her smile. <laughs> and Wyatt, my goodness, I saw him on Facebook. He looks like he's grown, grown, grown up and he's got glasses. He looks like a, a young preppy guy there. He does look that way now. <laughs> well, Okay, Hannah, did I tell you it'd be great if you did for your media production a segment of Holy Cow? <laughs> okay, thank you, Whitmores. Um, we, uh, we'll, we'd be fortunate seeing you, and congratulations on your success. And uh, Sarah, I don't know how you and Steve do it, but you do it. 
Well, hopefully a couple of them will go to school for at least a few days. Okay, right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, this is indeed an exciting time. It's our first remote for Holy Cow Wow. We're here in Winnebago, Illinois, visiting a former employee of the Court Street, Nancy Merchinich, who was in our nursery and who some of our kids are really missing. I know my grandson Tommy is really missing Nancy's hugs and Nancy's lap on Sunday morning, but we're excited to talk about her new endeavor. She is now owner dishwasher, waitress, everything that needs to be done at Kennedy's on Benton in Winnebago, Illinois. Let's go inside. Well, Nancy, is there life after Court Street? Um, life during Court Street. Life during Court Street. Mm -hmm. well, I want you to know that there's a little boy named Tommy Crow <laughs> that is missing those hugs that you have on Sunday morning for him. But we're so happy. Tell us, tell us why does someone buy a restaurant during the time of the COVID season? Um, one of the things that, um, one of the scriptures I remember the most is knock and you shall find, or the door will be opened. Right. All right. Or when a window closes, another one opens, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, I've wanted a diner since I first got into food service back in, oh boy, 2000. Eight maybe uh, when I was food and beverage director out at the Aviator Stadium slash Riverhawk Stadium, mm -hmm. and I thought I, I I loved it. I had a blast. I enjoyed te being the first job for kids who were just teenagers, oh, yeah, right. you know. And so when um, this place became available, um, or before this place became available the first time, I told the previous owners two owners ago I wanted it, and she sold it to someone else broke my heart. I came to work here as a hostess for the new owners and I had several conversations and as you know Jim I'm a Bears fan. Of course. So, of course. Of course. So um, he and I used to have a rivalry because he was a Vikings fan. Why? I don't know. Uh -huh. You know. 
So anyway, uh, he called me the week before Memorial Day this year and said, do you remember the conversation we had? And of course I asked him which one. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how to talk. Yes, I do. I'm very right. good at You're it. You're good at it. Um, and so um, he said the one where you want to buy the diner. And I said, yeah. He says, well, do you want to buy the diner? I said, let me call some people. So I called some people and here we are. Yeah. And so it's like a dream for you. Yes. Yes. Okay. But at this time, it's got to be hard to run a diner. All the rules and stuff. Well, if you go into it already knowing the, the regular rules, mm -hmm. just adding a few more isn't isn't that difficult. And yes, um, I've had two inspections from the health department. And, and I we, bet you passed really good. We passed with flying colors. Right. Uh, one was uh, just, you know, our dishwasher sanitation litmus paper wasn't working while well, it was expired. Oops. Yeah. But we, we replaced it. And you couldn't it. get any more because they, they were was, all out well, of it. Well, it was Sunday. Okay. So <laughs> they were closed. Um, but we, we got the right and they came back and everything was fine. Now they've just an, um, completed an annual inspection where they inspect from top to bottom. And we passed with flying colors. Well, now, when are you open, you know, in case some of our Court Street people won't come out? We are open um, Tuesday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. So right after church. Right after church. And I've had some of the Court Street uh, congregation visit me. Right. And I was just so tickled to be able to see them all again, mm -hmm. or some of them again. And then on Friday nights from 4 to 8, we have a Friday night fish fry. Mm. And without a doubt, you have the best hash browns <laughs> of anyone. I'm a hash brown person. It's really good. They're so good. Oh, so I'm good. glad. I'm so, glad you like them. Tell us a little bit about Kennedy's, its history in Winnebago. Well, this is a dual building. Um, it's two different buildings combined to one. Um, it started out as a uh, butcher shop, and I'm not exactly sure what the name of that was. Then it turned into Cash's Grocery Store, as far as I can remember. And then it went to, when, I, when we moved here when I was a young lady, uh, younger lady, uh, it was Turner's Market. And then someone came out of the blue and turned it into a uh, diner and it's been a diner ever since. And who is Kennedy? Kennedy's um, are the previous owners to me. It was Dan and Amy and that's their last name and they chose to call it Kennedy's on Benton Street. Okay, good. good. Mm -hmm. Now did you grow up in Winnebago? I grew up in Winnebago School District. In school district. Yes, I um, grew up uh, for the first uh, eight, nine years of my life we were out on uh, Simpson and Centerville area then my dad got transferred to Wisconsin. We made him promise that if he ever had to come, if he ever lost that job or they transferred him out, he had to come back to this school district, and he did. Yeah. And so I spent um, eighth grade through high, senior year here. Well, graduated. You've got so much energy, <laughs> and whenever you approach anything, you approach it with excitement, mm -hmm. and just is the excitement still here? Oh yes, yeah. oh yes, and I think it always will be. Okay. And um, it's to the point now where that I have a really good staff that helps me out. So maybe, just maybe, I can visit the nursery once in a while. Oh, or if not, you can give Thomas his first job. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. okay, well, thank you so much. Um, God has opened a door and uh, you've opened it, or God has given you a door and you've opened it and you've knocked and- uh, Walked right in. Walked right in. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And now to Krista and Violet for some rainbow ramblings. Good evening, Court Street. We're live from Hollywood. No, we're in Rockford in my living room. We're live from Rockford, just like always. Welcome to the Court Street Masquerade Catwalk, where you've submitted photos. Last month, we asked you to submit photos of yourselves, your friends, your family wearing masks. And so, here's our show for you. Our first Catwalk contestants are Nora and Noah. Aww. Grandchildren, oh, they're adorable. Nora is sporting the mask with cute little kitty cats. And Noah has, oh, Jurassic Park, it's dinosaurs! Next up, we have Phil and Susan Zimmerman. If you notice, they're both wearing blue masks, 
which happens to match their shirts. Very well coordination. And you'll also notice that Phil is sporting the best in Hawaiian wear, because in this pandemic, life's a beach. Our next contestants are Laurel, 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 and Rob Wandell, who are wearing these beautiful music masks. And notice the rainbow. I love rainbows, so you have my vote tonight. Very colorful. Next up, we have Laurel's sister, Burlap Gorman. Oh, look at that one. And if you notice, she has a beautiful floral pattern, and it matches the colors of her shirt. It's got some it's very green, bright. some yellow, and some blues in it. It's beautiful. Beautiful, yes. Ooh. Who is that handsome devil? I mean, the mask is rather plain. Look how put together he is. Uh, to, to, Krista, do you know if he's single? Well, this is Andrew Merzenich, our organist, and yeah, he is engaged. Oh, he'll make some woman very happy one day. Um, okay, he, he's gay, but... Oh, I love happy people! Yeah, right. Okay, next we have Georgia Lee George. She has on a red mask with some white lettering, and it says, Help keep Patrick Mayhem safe. Wear a mask. Indeed, we should all do our part to make sure this pandemic lasts as little time as possible. Wear your mask, keep everyone safe. Now, this fine young fellow is Jim Crow. I know him personally. He was the one who introduced me to Court Street. And Jim, you know, is wearing blue with blue. I don't know exactly what to make of the pose, though. Is he being intellectual or is he reprimanding someone? Was this picture taken against his will? The world may never know. Our next uh, pre presenter is Nancy Duran. She is wearing a beautiful blue mask that has a mini floral pattern on it. Lots of flowers in this masquerade catwalk. Yes. Oh, Jack! Jack Armstrong! He's the music director! Yes, he is! Yes. He has a boy in college, I hear. Yes. Um, he has on one standard issue mask, but notice he has the Platteville Pioneers on, so he's supporting some school spirit. Next up, we have Sandy Gregory. Oh, I love Ooh. this one. This Look is at this mask. It's a lion or a tiger. I'm not sure which, but it's great. Lots of fun. I bet her grandkids love it. <laughs> Our final contestant on the Court Street Masquerade Catwalk is, of course, Pastor Calvin Culpepper. I guess most of us are hoping he's not wearing a holy mask. Oh. We'll be back after these messages. No, we won't. This is the end of the show. Roll so, the credits! No, no, no. Not the end of the show, the end of the segment. So, until next month, I'm Krista. I'm... What is my name? I'm Violet Bouquet. Bon appétit! We'll see you next month. Bye! Summer's coming to an end, and that means Methodist Mondays are coming to an end. For those of you who don't know what Methodist Mondays are, let me tell you, it was something that Georgia Lee George started a couple years ago. Members of our church would come down on Mondays, which is pretty a slow day downtown, even slower now, and hand out water, snacks, bananas, things to passer buyers. Um, and we want to thank all the people who helped this year on Methodist Mondays. We have pictures of some of them, and we also have names of our wonderful volunteers. You know, Court Street is a downtown church, and we help our downtown neighbors and our downtown congregation. So thank you all Methodist Mondays members, and here are some Methodist Monday memories.
It's Teresa again for the nurses newsletter information. I just want to remind you to get your uh, flu vaccine early this year. I would say the beginning of October. Court Street, I have it lined up at October 18th on a Sunday. Uh, Walgreens will be at the church giving flu vaccines from about 1045 after the church service till about 1230. They will have the high dose and the low dose. So hopefully we'll be in church service and we'll all be together and we can uh, you can stop by. But if we're not there, make sure you call your doctor, make an appointment or go into an urgent care or Walgreens or CVS and do get your flu vaccines early. But we'll have it on the E blast also, October 18th, mark your calendar. And then I wanna tell you, it's very important to make sure you're up to date on your vaccines. After we, as we age, our immune system does become a little bit compromised. So at 65, the CDC does recommend that everybody get vaccinated with the pneumonia vaccine. There's two of them. So you get one one year and one the next. There's a Prevnar 13 and the 23 that will protect you against different strains of bacteria, pneumonia, and then there's some viruses out there too. You also need to remember if you haven't gotten your shingles vaccine, to please get your shingles vaccine. It's a two-part series. And then if you're around children or you have new grandchildren, make sure that you get your pertussis vaccine, which is the whooping cough. It's very important that we protect each other during this time, especially during the pandemic. And for children or great, if you have grandchildren, as they get to be boys and girls between the ages of 11 and 12, there's the HPV vaccine, which most cervical cancers as young adults, women, is caused by the HPV virus. So please look and ask your healthcare provider what you need and what they recommend, because your doctor really knows you best. And I also want to let you know, in the United States, there's between 50 and 90,000 people that die every year from preventable diseases that the vaccine can help against. So that's a lot, and a lot of people don't get their vaccines. It's very, very important that you're up to date on your vaccines. And I wanna show you someone that just came here for a little visit. Oh, hold on. Oh yeah. This is my newest granddaughter, Remy. Say hi to everyone. And yes, did I get my whooping cough vaccine before she was born? You betcha I did. So anyhow, you guys have a good good time until I see you next. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. And now it's time for Make a Joyful Noise. Today's Holy Cow segment, Make a Joyful Noise, features a local performer that's just received some national prominence. Samantha Bonsi performed at Court Street United Methodist Church in our concert series called Broadway and Religion a couple years ago. Since then, she's moved on to college and studied musical theater, got a degree, came back and did a lot of things uh, in the local scene. Her family runs Bonsi's productions and we all know how we all favor Todd Bonzi when he comes to our church and graces us with his talents. She went to Chicago, started getting some business, and then COVID happened. She came home and, and uh, didn't know what to do, but one day she found out that there was a national contest. A very famous musical theater shaker-upper, Seth Rodensky, had a national contest where he um, asked people to send in tapes of songs. And he has a show that's called The Actors Fun. And um, they are, have a Broadway show, people sing. And at one time they said, let's have some local talent. Well, Samantha sent in her tape and guess what? It was selected. So some things sometimes happen because of bad things. Uh, she had not been in I mean, if it had not been the COVID, she would uh, not, uh, Steph would not have had the contest and the, be winning the contest. She got more exposure in New York uh, from people. And I, I hear now that there are producers following her and I, I just wish her the best of luck. And uh, she's going to sing a song today called You Say. Many times during the last, since Friday the 13th, March, Friday the 13th, I've just said, where are you? What are you doing? How can you help me? 
Well, this song and Sam's rendition of it, you say, answers those questions. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? me once again just who I am because I need to know Ooh, oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing you say I am strong when I think I'm weak and you say you say of me oh I believe the only thing that matters now is everything you think of me in you I find my worth in you I find my identity for Prayers with Pastor. Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for this day um, that we had with the Holy Cow Wow group. It's been a blessing, I'm sure. And um, I want to share with you a, a scripture that comes out of Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And it's from the Living Bible Translation. And I want this to be the closing words in reference to all the things that we've learned tonight. And it goes like this. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here, there is no conflict 
with Jewish laws. And so, you know, you can recognize that was Paul talking to the Galatians. And in this scripture, this verse says to us, if we will give control of our lives to the Holy Spirit, if we will daily choose to give our lives over to the Holy Spirit, he will produce in us beautiful a beautiful harvest of healthy characteristics. The more we choose to allow the Holy Spirit to control our lives, the more abundant life we can have. And I ask that you would probably read this verse yourself, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, and many times in the coming days, as we go through some trying times in our time right now with the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic, with the financial, um, you know, um, uh, situation that we're in as far as the downfall in our, in our uh, finances, and then job loss and, 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 and a lot of other things. And then the things in life that's normal, death and sickness and illness and all the other unfortunate things that come along with life are all happening at once. And we need all of the help we can get to make ourselves feel good about who we are and who God created us to be. And so these words I share with you come from a dear friend of mine. And um, her name is Emily Moore. And she wrote these words. And I want to read them as a prayer. Thank you. God, we thank you for the promises in Scripture. We thank you that you want to live and walk with us. Lord, help us daily to give you control. Have amazing how amazing, O oh Lord, to think that the cre creator of the heavens and the earth wants to have a relationship with us. We thank you in advance for your blessings this week. Lord, there are so many around us hurting, struggling, worrying, and wondering about their, their future. Comfort them. Reassure them. Help them to draw near to you. I pray that we all choose to give you full control this week. God, help us to cling to you and your promises. Amen. And may God bless you. Have a good night. See you next week. Bye. Or the next, next month. Sorry. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm coming back uh, to you to talk a little bit about what do we mean by house and home. Uh, I had a favorite poet when I was younger, and he was not perhaps one of America's greatest poets. He was kind of like to poetry what Norman Rockwell is to the world of art and illustration. Probably not going to be on the uh, walls of an art museum, and his poems are treasured by some, but not by all. But anyway, he had a poem about home the part of which I want to share with you. It goes like this. It takes a heap of living in a house to make it home. A heap of sun and shader. And you sometimes have to roam. Before you really appreciate the things you left behind. And hunger for them somehow. With them always on your mind. It ain't a home to you, though it be a place or a palace of a king, until somehow your soul is wrapped around everything. Well, that says a little bit about what it means to be at home in a house. Jesus, when he was 12 years old, went with his family to Jerusalem, and when they were heading back to their home in Nazareth, uh, after they'd been on the road a while, they realized, hey, Jesus is not with us. You suppose he's still back in Jerusalem? So they went back there, and there Jesus was in the temple. And they sort of scolded him that he had not been a part of the company of travelers when they left. But he said to them, uh, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Well, I'm not sure how Joseph took that, but it begin, began to make a, a, a difference in his expressing things about what it meant, meant to be in a home with his parents and what it meant to be in the temple and to be at worship in God's house, what he called his father's house. 
where we meet and where we learn of God has sometimes been called the house of God. Uh, so in that sense, it's not a place like a building, but it can be in a building or it can be in another place or just as a place where people gather and learn, worship and fellowship and pray together. At one point, Jesus was approached by somebody who said that they really admired him and they wanted to be his, one of his disciples and to travel with him. And Jesus said, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no, nowhere to lay his head, suggesting that Jesus didn't have a regular house to go to, a regular home. Another time, he took issue with people who were selling things in the temple. And he said at that time, and he scolded them and he chased them out or chased them a bit. And he said, this place, my father's house must be a house of prayer for all people, but you have made it into a commercial place. Jesus was often at a house or a home of friends, or sometimes a home uh, that was the original house or home of one of his disciples. And so he did visit people in, in their homes and he felt at home with them. We think especially of his time of going and being with Mary and Martha and how they cared and cooked for him and learned from him and shared and studied together and prayed together. At towards the end of his life ministry with people, after he had had the last supper with his friends, the disciples, uh, he said to them, I am only going to be with you a little bit longer. And then he shared with them that he would not always be present in a physical sense with them. But he said, that they were to not to worry because he was going on purpose to prepare a place for them, a place where he would be and where eventually they would be with God together at home with the Lord. He said to them, the place where I'm going, you cannot come now, but I will return and take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And that way is known to you. One of the disciples said, well, we don't really know the way. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And you can come to God by me. He said, in my father's house, there are many rooms. In way, his way of saying, well, there's room for you. There's a place for you to be at home with me and with God. We are and we have the opportunity also ourselves to be the home of God, whether it is in the house of God, our church, where we like to meet in fellowship, or wherever we are and we and we meet in study, in prayer, in fellowship together, remembering how we've been called to be Jesus' people, to form a community, a group of people, whether large or small, to be the home and house and the place of God. It takes a heap of living for an account of Jesus to know and to know how to find a home and to be a home, a dwelling place, a mansion, and to know that we are at home at last with the Lord. Thank you for listening and for sharing together with me. See you again. Bye. Well, that's our holy kawao for August. We uh, enjoy doing this. We're finding out that we're reaching a lot of people, but there's still something about the human contact that I'm missing, and um, I can't wait till 
we get it back again, you know, and, you know, God gives us a lot of situations and problems, but he never gives us something that we can't deal with. So next month, we're going to be talking about powerful women. Seems like a timely situation and topic, but we're also going to be talking about the use of apples. If you have a favorite apple recipe, a favorite thing you do with your apples, if you make potpourri, um, if you make baked goods from it, if you make muffins, we'd like to hear about how you do things with apples, okay? We can't wait to see you or talk to you or listen to you, but we just want you to know that we still love you and know that you are around. And with that, amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Bye. 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 Bye.